Welcome back to the Morning Blend. Our next guest says she's lived through those trenches in life with multiple sources of adversity, but all she knew was how to be a victim. That's right. Today we're here with Kat Dolls, who learned to climb out of those trenches. Her roadmap to help others fulfill their dreams is this. Her new book, Get Your Goddess On, Own Your Power, Love Your Life. And she's going to teach us how to do just that. Good to see you. Good to be here. Really yeah. nice to meet you. Absolutely. Thank this you. is exciting. I think the, the, the thing that a lot of people resonate right away with is it's about making yourself a priority again. We oftentimes don't do that, right? So many times yes. we as women especially put everything else ahead of our own needs. Do you find that to be true? All the time. And I think we forget that we really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody talks about all the people that matter. Well, everyone matters. And we as moms sometimes put ourselves last. Uh, well, all the time. We mm -hmm. most of the time yeah. put ourselves last. So if we can actually own that the fact that we are important also and treat ourselves that way because otherwise we give people permission to treat us less than right and, and think, that's not what we want to do and one of the keys is and this is a question in, in your quiz is do you often say yes when oh. you would like to say no oh, yes. and I think that's a, one of the ways we can make ourselves a priority is by saying no sometimes you know what I was addicted to congeniality for years I actually thought that I couldn't say no. And I just kept saying yes because that was the only way to please people. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a solid people pleasing mode, you end up staying in that. And for so long you get stuck. Mm -hmm. So when you finally start saying no, and one of the best things you can do is say, you know, um, let me check my calendar. I'll get back to you. That's a great way to be able to not say yes because even though it's, you're on the verge of it. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to say it because now you can actually. Don't give you have a rule about that? Yes, I have a rule about Thank that. You. And I always yes. say, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, if it feels depleting, say no. If it feels like freedom, right. you say yes. 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 I mean, and, and now it's not that you don't have to be nice because everybody's uh, congeniality is a nice thing to be nice to people. But when you get excessive, and you know when you've been excessive, right. and you don't want to go to things, and you go, oh, I, I said yes again. Dread it, you right. Know, you're dreading those things. That's when you know you've said yes too many times. There's yeah. like that magnet I got for my aunt one time that said, please stop me from volunteering again. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you could be doing good, but you're not really giving of yourself because you're just emotionally depleted. So you got to fill back up. What are simple ways to realize that you've given your power away? And how do you stop it? Besides saying no, is there another way to realize that? Well, one of the things is you put in check the boundaries you have set up for yourselves. If you have um, no boundaries and all you want to do is make sure everybody else is happy, mm -hmm. that's one thing you'll know right then that you don't have a good sense of yourself anymore. That's a way you know you've given power. If you feel intimidated by someone, if you have um, given your power away, usually there is a less than feeling associated with it. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is just look and think, you know, they're, they are people too. You're just like them. You, you know, everybody's really the same. We all want the same things. So what I would love to do is have people just take a look and say, where am I feeling so less than? If I have to walk on eggshells with someone, then you know you've given your power away to someone too. I like that. that. What yeah. about self-forgiveness? Because you see oh. that's the key to moving forward. It was my key. I love self-forgiveness. What are the steps? What are the three steps? Well, the three steps is number one, you acknowledge what went on. Mm -hmm. and, and now this is what you've done and also what someone else has done, okay? Just acknowledge it, kind of talk about it like, oh, there's flowers on the table, you know, just like that. Then the next step is the good news, bad news. You have to take responsibility and oh. you have to own. I know, I That's know. That's not the fun part. This, this is all about responsibility too. When you own what you've done, did I do whatever it is? And, and then you turn around, maybe it's just that you tolerated someone's behavior. Yep. It could have been as simple as that. Own it. I tolerated that they treated me that way and, and be okay with it. Then you're not okay with it anymore. Then what you can do is once you own it, you can release it. Because like say, let's say I borrowed this shirt from you, okay? Yep. And I wore it out. The next day, I can't take it to my favorite resale shop and, and sell it. Okay? <laughs> no, you can't. No, no, I can't because I don't own it, right? Right. So how can you give something away or release it? without owning it. Oh. That's the key. I like that. Uh, yeah. 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 Yep. I like that. So that's what really made the difference for me. I love in your book you've got this congeniality quiz as well. These are for the ultimate people pleasers. You can find out if you're a yes woman who just can't say no by answering certain questions. Yeah, and one of them is have you lost your voice at home, work or in your relationship or all three? Mm -hmm. Um do you frequently check with someone before you answer? Yeah. That's huge. <laughs> oh. Um do you walk on eggshells with anyone? Do you change your view of 
something based on who you're with? Yes. Are there people that you avoid being with because you feel <laughs> inferior when you're with them? Mm. There are a lot of good questions here to ask There's yourself. There's 10 it. questions, and I was a 10 question yes girl for a really long mm -hmm. time. Not anymore, but you wouldn't have wanted me on the show in that way. <laughs> Believe yeah. Me, yeah. I think it's wonderful, and I think at the at the end, people can get their goddess back. What, yes. We're out of time, but what does it mean to be a goddess to you? Everyone's a goddess, male goddesses, female goddesses. We're all goddesses. We own our power. We're responsible for us. We love who we are, and we represent that to the world. That's very empowering, very important. One of the goddess. questions you ask, you, you put out there, is why are women so impressed by powerful men? What's the answer to that? Because we don't have that sense of that we matter and that we're important too. We're just the same as them. We don't have, and they don't have anything on us, but there is this magical thing that makes someone that's seemingly important to us that they're better than we are, and they aren't. And, and we sometimes forget our boundaries, and that's what happens. So healthy boundaries are really a helpful way to uh, stop from doing that. I love I like it. it. I think it's a great book, and people can get a hold of it by going to getyourgoddessonthebook.com.